In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to rig your characters for complete beginners. This is meant as a starting point to get you into rigging and moving about your characters in the simplest way possible. If you want to take it further, then do check out my rigging and animation course discount code in the description. Okay, so I'm in Blender 4.1, but this should work in most Blender versions. Do check the description for any updates. I've got a really basic character here. If I go into edit mode with tab, so that's edit mode up here, you can see it's a really basic character. It has got a subdivision surface modifier on. So if I go to the modifiers, you can see that subdivision surface modifier there. And you can also see the mirror above it as well. And you can rig characters with a mirror and a subdivision surface modifier and they'll still work well. So let's add the most basic of rigs to this character. Do be aware though that this is a very basic rig. It's not the most efficient rig, but it's a really good starting place to understand what rigging is. So I'll tab back into object mode, go to front view, and notice just quickly that my object origin is at the center of the scene. That can be quite helpful and useful. If I press N on my keyboard and go up to item, you can see my character is actually rather tall, 3.58 meters. So I can press S to scale, scale it down to let's say 1.9, a much more reasonable size, but because the object origins in the middle at the bottom, it's nice and easy to do that. So that's why you tend to get characters that have their object origins at the bottom there. Okay, so I want to add an armature, but before I do, it's a good idea to have the 3D cursor right in the center of your scene. If it's not, hold down shift and press S and cursor to world origin. That way when I add my armature, it will be right in the middle. Let's go back to front view with one on my numpad, shift A to add, or you can go to the add menu up here and under armature, single bone. Let's zoom in and see what's going on. Unfortunately, this bone is inserted into this person in a rather nasty way, but that does show us that when the bone is inside the person, we can't see the bones and we want to be able to see the bones all the time. So we can come across to the object data properties. That's with the bone selected down to viewport display, scroll down a bit further and in front. So the bones will always be visible in front of the character. Now to position the bones, we actually want to go into edit mode because we want to keep that object origin in the middle at the bottom there. And to edit our bones or add new bones to this particular armature, an armature being a set of bones, we need to do that in edit mode. So tab into edit mode, or well that's edit mode up here. I'll zoom in a touch and I'm going to start moving the bones around. Now very quickly, the bone is split into three parts, the head, the main body of the bone, which selects everything, and then the tail at the end here. And you can move the head and the tail or the whole bone together. So let's select the whole bone by selecting the middle, S to scale it down, G to grab in the Z axis. And it is important to keep it to the Z axis so it stays in the middle. Then we know it's right in the center of our character. I'll press G to grab, and this can be the first bone in the torso. I'll just do two bones for the torso so the character can bend in half. To create a new bone, we can select the tail and press E to extrude and press Z for the Z axis and move that up to here. For the neck, E to extrude in the Z, move that up to there. And for the head, E to extrude in the Z and take that up to the top there. Okay, so how do we add in the arms? Well, we can come from this point here, the start of the neck bone, E to extrude outwards like so, and that's like a clavicle. E to extrude to the elbow, E to extrude to the hand or wrist there, and E to extrude for the hand. Okay, so we've got an arm in, but what about the other side? Well, there is a handy button here called X symmetry. If I click on that, it should mean that anything you do to this side will happen on the other side. So let's try and extrude a hip bone out here. So I'll select the tail of the base bone there, E to extrude and pull that out to the side here. Now it hasn't worked the symmetry and there's a reason for this. Whenever you add a new bone to one side, it doesn't add one to the other side because it's not labeled correctly. Labeling is quite important for bones, particularly if they're on one side. So this bone, for example, down here, the hip bone, I can rename that by pressing F2, or I can go down to the bone properties here and up to the top there, we've got the name as well, and I can click on that and rename it, and I'll call it hip.l. So this is the left side of the character, so .l represents the left. I'll do the same for the arm, but I'll speed this up. So shoulder.l, upper arm, and you can put in an underscore or capital letters or whatever you choose, forearm dot L and hand dot L. So they've all got their dot L now. So I can select my entire armature with A, right click and symmetrize. And you can see how those bones are now on the other side. And if I click on any of those bones, you can see in the name here, and in fact, in the top left here, that we've got that dot R now instead of dot L for this side. Hence why naming is very useful. So I can now select this point here, the tail of our hip bone, E to extrude. And because I've got the X symmetry turned on up here, and it's labeled correctly, it's also going to do it on the other side as well. So I'll bring that down to here, E to extrude down to the bottom here. Let's go to side view now with three. I'll just position these a little bit better and E to extrude down here for the foot. 
I can just reposition some of these as well, but generally they're not too bad. Now you might want to rename your legs and feet. I'm not going to do that, but that's something that I would recommend you do because at the moment they're just hip.l003 and so on. Now, how do we attach our character to the armature? Well, we parent one to the other. A simple explanation of parents is that the child, in this case, the character, will always go where the parent goes. So when I move my bones, the child of the bone, or the character in this case, will move as well. The way we parent is we do this in object mode. So tab back into object mode, that's object mode up here. We always make sure that the parent, what we're trying to parent to, in this case, the bones, is selected last or the active object. So if I select the body and then select the bones last, the bones is the active object. You can see that in the outliner, there's armature and there's my body. And you can also see it's highlighted in yellow, the active object. I can now press control P to parent. You can also find that in the object menu under parent, but I'll press control P, it simplifies the menu. And under armature deform, there's an option called automatic weights. We'll click on that and I'll explain it a little bit further. So now if I click just on the body and go to the modifiers, We've got our mirror modifier. We've then got our subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. And then we've got the armature. And what we've also got that's new is under the vertex data, we've got vertex groups. And each of the bones has a vertex group. So let's say the hand just here will have influence on the vertices around it and also be given a certain weight. So I'll select our armature. I'll go into pose mode. So that's control tab, or you can choose pose mode up here. And let's see how we got on. I'll select a bone and press R to rotate, and you can see that's moving my character. And I can keep selecting different bones, rotate them to move different parts of my character. Now, like I say, this is a very simple rig, so it might be a bit awkward to control, but it's done a reasonable job. What you might notice though, is that there's some distortion around places like this. This is due to the weight of the vertices. If I zoom out just a touch, come out of pose mode, back into object mode with control tab, or that's object mode up here, and choose the body, then go into edit mode. Now initially that goes back to its original position, but I can click on my modifiers and choose this option here, display modifier in edit mode, and the on cage option, which will actually move the object into its position affected by this modifier. And you can see my character's so simple that if I select this edge loop here, that's the only piece of topology between these two joints. So there's a bit of distortion there. And ideally would have more topology where there's a joint. It's worth noting there's a button within the modifier called preserve volume. So if you do have enough topology and you're still getting pinching, that can sometimes help. It tries to keep the volume of the shape. In this case, it's not helping because we've not got enough vertices in this joint here. So I'll turn that off, but hopefully this should give you a nice starting point. I'll go back into object mode, back into my armature, back into pose mode, and you can see that you can have lots of fun moving this character around into weird, wonderful positions. Now, like I say, this rig is very basic and there'll be a few problems. If I select the root bone like this and press G to grab, you can see that the hip bone isn't linked properly. Generally, you have an extra root bone for moving the entire object. What we can do here is if I go into edit mode for my character, I can make sure that these bones move with this one by selecting both of them, selecting the bone we want them to parent to last and control P to parent. Use keep offset if you want to keep them in exactly the same position. Now, if I go into pose mode with control tab, cross to pose mode. If I select this one and press G to grab, it's moving my whole character. So there's a few handy tips that should help you when rigging your characters. If you want to learn more about this, then I would suggest taking my rigging and animation course discount coupon in the description. Any questions, then comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.